start with this slide. This slide is, is, I think, a motivator for a lot of us. When you look at how the U.S. ranks on various international comparisons, it's very clear that when it comes to the health of our public and how well our health system does in promoting that, we don't rank very well. And we all know that the U.S. spends a lot more than any other country on health, and that would be fine if we also had much better health outcomes than any other country, but sadly we don't. And various international comparisons have suggested that compared to our compatriots in Western Europe and Canada and Australia, we actually rank very poorly. So this, this is a comparison done by the Commonwealth Fund that actually ranked us 11th out of 11th on various metrics of health in terms of how well our health system does. So there's obviously a lot of room for improvement. One of the big issues that I think we really struggle with is the role of health behavior and how that contributes to health outcomes. And in a health system, which up till now has really prioritized, uh, has been funded by fee-for-service and has really prioritized treating people once they get sick, changing people's health behavior has been probably under-prioritized. So when people have, various experts have tried to estimate how much of premature mortality in the U.S. is due to different factors, experts have estimated that as much as 40% of premature mortality is actually due to health behavior. You can see the other, uh, the, the pie chart might be a little bit hard to see, but some of these other factors like social circumstances, environmental influences are also very important. Genetic predisposition is also important. Uh, current technology doesn't really allow us to change, change that. Uh, but the estimates are that the health care delivery system itself might only be responsible for 10 to 15 percent of premature mortality in terms of suboptimal care provision. But I think it raises all sorts of interesting questions about what is the responsibility of the health care delivery system. Uh, there are lots of areas like gun violence where Providers don't do a whole lot, by and large. It's seen as outside the province of the health system. And I think the same thing, uh, to some degree, is true of a lot of health behaviors more generally and really highlights some of the opportunities we have in front of us to do better. So we know that uh, there's very high rates of obesity in the U.S. Smoking is still the leading cause of mortality, uh, killing about 440,000 Americans each year. And then we also know that common diseases uh, like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure kill lots of people and the role of behavioral factors in them in terms of lifestyle medication adherence is also really important. So, you know, as of now, we really have a healthcare system where doctors expect patients to come to them. And as healthcare financing shifts and we move away from a fee-for-service environment to one in which population health is prioritized, I think we'll see fairly significant changes in really thinking about how do we create a system that really goes to patients, meets them where they are in their homes and their communities, and really cares about these issues around how do we address social determinants of health, how do we change the environment, how do we improve people's behavior. Because if I'm a health delivery system, if I'm now financially at risk for a population of people, these concerns, which in theory I cared about before, uh, now create financial risk for me, and that, that's a whole new ball game. So we think there'll be a lot of interesting innovation in this area and lots of opportunities for researchers to make important contributions in terms of trying to figure out how to do this well. So let me close with, with three thoughts, you know, which I think uh, you know, really are intended to leave on an optimistic note. Uh, we, we feel like we know a lot more from what we've learned in behavioral economics uh, and other behavioral sciences about how to motivate people, help them change behavior, we now have so many more ways to reach patients where they are through social media, wireless devices. And these shifts in healthcare financing, I think, create a world of new possibilities for people who have been concerned for years about public health in the U.S. because, you know, as you know, the underlying incentive for fee-for-service is really treating people when they get sick. And it's not that a health delivery system would want people to get sick so they had more people to treat. But there were clearly disincentives to put a lot of resources into trying to keep people healthy. And that really shifts now as these health financing model shifts. I think it really creates enormous new possibilities and we're very optimistic that we'll be able to make a lot of progress in population health as a result. Thank you.